Joining me now, David Schoen, former Trump impeachment lawyer, and Saul Weisenberg, former assistant U.S. attorney and deputy independent counsel. Gentlemen, both, thank you so much for being here. David, let me start with you. You heard the optimism from the Trump camp. Uh, what are the chances something is, is quickly dismissed? And if not, what, what does the process look like? Well, I think the, the chances, uh, I, I can't really predict, but I think that there are at least three motions that ought to be filed immediately after the arraignment. First of all, as to the process, you know, I've been through this with this judge on a high-profile yeah. case. They're going to process uh, President Trump um, like they normally do, uh, take certain pedigree information and so on. And then he'll go to Judge Merchan's courtroom. Judge Merchan usually allows a still photographer to take one picture while he's sitting at the defendant's table, and he will move through it pretty quickly. Question is whether at the arraignment they'll also set a motion schedule. Um, that's kind of up in the air, I think. Um, but they're going to uns unseal the indictment before the arraignment, so at least the lawyers can look at it then. I don't think there was any reason to seal it until now, but that's what they've chosen to do. But anyway, I think there are three motions they should file immediately after the arraignment. One is a motion to dismiss on statute of limitations ground, very interesting arguments there. Uh, one would be a motion to dismiss and disqualify uh, District Attorney Bragg, I think, based on his campaign statements, specifically targeting President Trump and promising to convict him when he wasn't even under investigation. And third, I would personally move to recuse the judge. I think that there's uh, monkey business going on with the, judge, with the judge shopping process, and I have an historic uh, basis for making that claim. Uh, but we'll see. I don't think it's coincidental that he was a judge on the Trump Organization case and the Bannon case, mm. and now this case. And they, in the past, have acknowledged the practice of judge shopping. Yeah, it certainly looks like in this case. Um, Saul, I got to get your take on this, though, because late tonight, just moments ago, Michael Isikoff reported, and this is just early reporting, that Donald Trump will be charged with 34 felony counts for falsification of business records, but he will not be put in handcuffs, as has been reported, placed in a jail cell or subject or subjected to a mugshot. So now they're saying no mugshot, no handcuffs, but 34 felonies, Saul? Your, your reaction, if that reporting is correct? Well, you know, Spikey, Michael Isikoff, that's his nickname, usually gets his stories <laughs> right. But like we've talked about on this show, uh, you can gin up a prosecution, whether it be a misdemeanor or a felony, with a lot of counts. The key thing for people to watch for, Pete, is what is the substance here? Remember what the statute, the statute is falsification of business records, which is a misdemeanor unless you're trying to cover up another crime. So take a look at what that other crime is. If it's a campaign finance violation, boy, that's an incredibly weak case uh, for reasons I'd be happy to explain. But who knows? It could be something else. It could sure. be state tax law. But the key is to look at, does it look like it's petty or is it something really substantive? Uh, your, your reaction as well, David, uh, if they really are foregoing a mugshot, that seems different. Um, we heard reports of, you know, two dozen or 30 counts, not necessarily all of them felonies. If that reporting is correct, and again, we'll learn tomorrow, um, what's your reaction to how the judge will approach this and how the, both sides will? Well, you know, Saul's absolutely right. They often just jack up the number of counts. But I think this DA is too savvy to have this case just depend on Michael Cohen or, or the McDougal case. I think there probably will be some charges about business fraud, that sort of thing. But um, I'll tell you, another issue that, uh, that I think may come up tomorrow and I'm concerned about is the idea of a gag order. I'm, you know, vehemently opposed to them. Yeah. Um, I think they have First Amendment implications, Sixth Amendment implications, make it much more difficult to defend a case, to encourage witnesses to come forward, that sort of thing. And I think there's a great public interest in this case. New York law is pretty good on this. They, um, they have a pretty strict standard for it. Uh, the judge has to articulate specific findings. And I could see this judge coming in and talking about some of the posts that he's seen, and he's not going to put up with this and that. This is a judge who's very sensitive to the media presence there. And there have been a number of po problems in the past because they don't use electronic filing in this court. It's all paper filing. The media has got to be very aggressive here in getting full access to all filings in this case and to resisting a gag order, uh, and especially a gag order of the breadth that's being talked about in the press. Saul, former President Trump has been very critical of this judge. I mean, can he get a fair, fair hearing in a New York City courtroom con considering what he's been up against? 
Well, I don't know enough about this particular judge. David would know that. There's no reason to think that he that he can't get a fair hearing, but I think we need to watch it carefully. And if I, I think that if there is a gag order, uh, like David says might happen, you're, you're going to immediately have heavy litigation on that. But something else your viewers yeah. should keep in mind is that in a criminal case, it's often very difficult to get the actual charges knocked off on a question of law alone. If if it is based partly on fact, unfortunately, sometimes they make, often they make the defendant go through a trial. Interesting. Yeah. All right, tomorrow will will tell us everything we need to know, at least initially. David and Saul, thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.